Mark, how do you respond now knowing that this is state-sponsored cyber warfare coming from China? Well, Taylor, I think as you know, uh, the, the cyber event in 2017 had a significant imp impact on Equifax, but the fact that the attackers um, were a, a military arm of a foreign government really raises the stakes and raises the bar for all of us. And as Attorney General Barr pointed out, it's not just Equifax, they've attacked multiple companies. And defending against a, a foreign government and a military arm of a foreign government is a lot different than defending yourselves against a hacker or someone who's trying to steal credit card numbers. It just raises the stakes for all of us. So what are you doing to make sure that those 145 million Americans and others are more protected now than they were in 2017? Yeah, you, you may know that we launched uh, soon after the cyber event. Uh, we really had two options. Uh, we could have spent a couple hundred million dollars to enhance our security. Instead, we made a bold move to really transform not only our security, but also our technology um, to the very latest uh, capabilities out there in the cloud. And we launched a $1.25 billion um, investment in our security and technology that we're about two thirds of the way through. And it's really part of our commitment to be an industry leader in data security and make sure that we really protect that sensitive data that's entrusted to uh, Equifax. Mark, I'm sure that Equifax didn't expect uh, the hack back in September. So how confident can you be that the, that the measures you've taken this time are going to prevent future possibly more sophisticated attacks? No, it's a great question. As I mentioned earlier in the interview, um, you know, having this information come out on Equifax and then prior to that Anthem Health and others, it really does raise the bar. And uh, what we've focused on is having the very latest technologies, the very best people and the best protocols to make sure that we can defend ourselves against even adversaries like the foreign, uh, a foreign government military arm. At the same time, we're really working hard to collaborate and really be transparent with our competitors, with our customers, with other companies in the United States and with the government about these attacks. It's something that we believe not a single company can defend against. It really requires real collaboration because of the kind of attackers that we have today. Now, the data that was uh, hacked is still unused, but presumably it's also still out there. Is a concern that it could still be used maliciously? Yeah, we, we watch that closely. And uh, as Attorney General Barr mentioned this morning in his press conference, and we've been consistent about, there's no evidence of the data being used uh, for identity theft purposes. And Attorney General Barr in his press conference talked about the uh, at least the thinking is the reasons why the data was taken by China, why they took the Marriott data perhaps, why they've taken the Anthem Health data, is really to build up databases on Americans to use for spying purposes or other uh, um, government uh, type purposes, which uh, is not comforting, um, but it's much different than a, a hacker who's stealing credit card numbers or social security number to open up an account in someone else's name. And then second, I think as you know, uh, we announced um, last summer a comprehensive settlement of a class action lawsuit and uh, uh, litigation with the attorney generals in the United States, the FTC and the CFPB. And that included a uh, very large consumer fund that pro is providing uh, free consumer monitoring for consumers uh, um, for 10 years, for up to 10 years, so they can uh, watch their credit file to make sure um, there's nothing happening. Mark, there was a lot of concern about the delay. The hack was in May. You found out in July. You notified the FBI in August and didn't notify consumers until September. What are you doing to shorten that time period? Yeah, Terrell, it's a great question. Uh, as you know, I wasn't there when it happened. Uh, I joined in April of 2018 and have been you know, on the ground for about 22 months. Uh, you know, Looking back, I think the team did everything it could to get the information out as quickly as possible. As you might imagine, this attack was one of the largest ever, and it was also the most complicated one. And what the team focused on at the time was making sure that we were going to notify the consumers that were impacted, and that just took time to do it. I can tell you going forward, you know, we would want to move as quickly as we can if it ever happened again and make sure that we're very transparent you know, about uh, what's happening, and uh, that's really the, pr the practice we would have going forward. Knowing what we know now, where does China rank on your list of risks relative to other state-sponsored cyber warfare like Russia and Iran? Well, if you talk to the experts, which, as you might imagine, we spend a lot of time doing, given uh, what happened to us uh, uh, over two years ago and the kind of data that we possess, uh, all the countries you, met, you talked about, you know, uh, China, Russia, Iraq, North, North Korea, Iran, you know, those are countries that we all worry about. And that's why this bar is so much higher now. You know, when you see the military arm of a foreign government 
being the one that's attacking a U.S. company, stealing that data, in our case, consumer data. And it's really attack on U.S. consumers and on the United States. So it really does raise the bar. And that's why we're investing so much money and effort in our $1.25 billion um, technology and security transformation to make sure that we have absolutely the best technology. We set a bar that we're not going to have good security. We want to have industry leading security because of the sensitive data that we protect. Uh, Mark, uh, building up security and technology is one challenge, but is another challenge restoring the faith and trust of customers? Yeah, it's a great question, uh, Paul, and that's one that we've been working hard on while doing this technical uh, and security transformation. You may know it had a significant impact on our company. Historically, we grew 6 to 8%. In 2018, we were slightly negative, a down, down about 1%. As we've worked through 2019 in the first, second, and third quarter, you've seen sequential improvement as we've earned back the trust of our customers. And it really is, uh, is hinged all around our commitment to security and technology, that billion and a quarter investment. We're reporting our financial results for the fourth quarter on uh, Thursday. Uh, and you'll see uh, the results uh, then of our continued progress of moving the company uh, forward and back you know, to where it was before. When I joined in April of 2018, mm -hmm. I was consistent, and I have been since then. It's not a matter of if we return to our historical growth rates. It's only a matter of when.